we last left off, I finished basically completing our UI for the home page and the main app uh, dashboard page. If you log out, you will see a different page and be direct redirected to that. And then when you log in, you'll see this new dashboard page, which will have all the UI associated with creating a new project, a new team, and seeing activity relative to your own account. So none of this is actually hooked into anything yet. So we need to go ahead and do that besides the account info panel. That's all hooked up with Devise, which you saw in the past few videos. If you're just jump, jumping into this series, I would definitely recommend starting from the beginning. It's really going to give you the foundation to make sure this thing is up and running correctly. So let's go ahead and first generate our very first model. And I'm going to start with the team model uh, because projects is a little easier. Uh, Teams is going to be the bear of the, of the, um, the pack. So I'll go ahead and start there. Shut down my server. I'm going to go ahead and generate a new scaffold. And some people would frown upon using a scaffold. I like to just in the sense that it, for this sake, I am learning and I'm teaching. So in your own projects, you don't need probably all the files that get generated when this happens, but Rails makes it easy to do and available for us. So why not? So I'm going to create a new model called team with the scaffold and I am going to give it just a name for now. So that's the only parameter we're looking for. So I will just run that generation and you'll see quite a few files come out. Uh, we have our controllers, our complete view set up for the CRUD. So create new, uh, read and destroy, create, read, update, and destroy. That's what it is. Uh, they're called different actions here, but we've got our controller that's associated with that. And of course, our routes have been added, um, some test stuff. If you're going into that JBuilder stuff for JSON kind of manipulation and of course assets. So one thing I like to do immediately is we'll get rid of this view and this and by default, when you run a scaffold, it generates a scaffold SAS file. I'm going to just delete that since we already have our own uh, stuff going. And if you find that it's conflicting, that would be why. So we have a teams file now too. In a previous video, I am imported that here. I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. So I don't forget with and I don't know that there'll be much code in here, but I know we did use some, so I'm gonna maybe grab that from this project. Yeah, it's this stuff. And you can do the same. I don't think CSS is a focus for us in this series, so maybe I'll make a different series about CSS and all the kind of cool stuff I love about it. Uh, but here we go to start with this. this. This is importing into our main application file now. By default, Rails kind of already includes that. This is kind of just a habit for me, so it is what it is. Let's start with our model. If you look in the database, it generated a migration as well, which is called create teams. And we haven't actually raked the database migration yet, so we still need to do that, but I just want to show you what it actually does when it creates that. So here we're just creating a table called teams, which is our new model. and a string on it, which is name. So let's go ahead and run rate db migrate. And it should add that to our new schema. Great. So to verify, I can just look in our schema and you'll see those fields there. Now I do want to have the user ID on the teams table and that's so I can associate the team ID with it. And the same is true for the user ID itself. So by default, an ID on a user, it will exist since it's a model. Um, it's kind of confusing, but Rails is smart enough to know how to associate those things based on the relations we're about to have. So I'm going to go ahead and add that as a migration. So Rails generate migration, add user, or is that right? Let's see, add user ID. Yeah, user ID to teams. And I'll have user ID and teams. Or user ID should be an integer, I'm sorry. That would have aired out. 
So with that in place, you should be able to go ahead and run that migration. We'll look into our schema or migrations again. On the teams column, we're gonna add a user ID, which is an integer, so that's good. So rails or rake db migrate. And that will migrate that over. If you ever mess up on a migration, you can do what's known as a rollback. So if you do rails db migrate, or db rollback, excuse me, it'll undo the last one you just did and remove it from the schema. Um, you can go back as far as the beginning. You can source an individual migration by the actual uh, timestamp on it, but that's just something to th keep in mind. You're going to mess up at some point and it's, you're going to need a, a life saving thing like that to help. So that's how you do that. If you Google rails, DB migration, rollback or whatever, it'll show you all this stuff. All right. So to re-migrate it back, you can hit migrate again. And now we have that ID in our table. So let's look, there it is. Awesome. Okay, now while I'm at it, I'm gonna create our project scaffold too, just so we have the necessary relations in order. Uh, so I'll do that next, and a project's gonna have a name and a description. So Rails generates scaffold project name, string, description, text. Great. And when you run a generation like this, you can pass in a bunch of flags. If you run rails generate scaffold dash dash help, I think it will show you what you can pass. Uh, there's a lot there to, to kind of digress. So I won't even worry about it at this point, but just know that you can tell rails not to generate stuff uh, as you go. But this way is the simplest. And again, it, it created that CSS file we didn't really want, which isn't a big deal. All I have to do is delete it. Great. So I'll delete that. Don't save it. And in our applications folder or CSS, I'll actually import the projects CSS file just so I don't forget again. And in that file, let's reference our old project. I just have a little bitty amount. Push that there. Okay, CSS is all set up. And with our models in place, we, we generated that migration. It didn't actually resolve into the database yet. So we can do that next. I will need to add both a team ID and a user ID to a project because a project needs to associate with both a user and a team. So we need those IDs that depend on the user or the team to match up when you ref when you basically query for a specific user who say has a project on a team. So confusing as hell, I know, but it's, if you sit there and you think about the relationships and what needs to happen, maybe write down an outline of who needs to own what and what needs to be available to who kind of helps. Um, it threw me for a loop and this app, I will say, took me probably the longest to build out of all of them so far. So hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully I'm not just skimming through this and you guys are clueless. Let me know if so, because I'd love to know how I can help and how, how I can change it and make it easier. Let's go to our migrations. Here's the current projects migration. So if, I'm going to first migrate that. So Rails DB migrate. And it'll do its thing. And you notice since we're using Webpack, it does this yarn check thing. That's only native to the Webpack instance on this project. So if you're doing traditional Rails without the Webpack thing, you won't see that. Just a, f a word to the wise. Okay, so we created our project model and we have it here available to us with a name and description. On top of that, we need the user ID and the team ID associated with it too. So let's create those two migrations and I like to piece them out just so I can undo them individually if I need to. We'll just kind of make a little process here. Add user ID to 
projects user ID integer and you can go ahead and just start with the next one you don't have to run that migration right then and there you can run those migrations all at once team ID to projects so team ID looks good okay then we can go back I just like to check the migrations. Some guys, they don't, they just know they typed it right and ever check. So basically only thing different should be the naming of the class and what ID we're using. Great. So let's run rails DB migrate again. And this stuff, it won't come to you immediately how you should, um, invoke these relations. This stuff took me quite a while to think about. Um, there was actually a period where I thought I needed to, you know, have a join table, which is a crazy concept where a table interacts. It, it literally exists. So the other two models can interact with each other. It's, it's kind of over my head, but I do want to get into it. If you think of some relationships like categories, on a blog or something or tags those are like many to many relationships uh, the same is true for like comments that you want throughout your app or something you can do have a has many through kind of relationship it gets in depth but um it's really helpful to see it in action or someone else who created a project using it so i think i'm going to try it just so maybe you guys can understand it and i can understand it more Okay, so we have that all migrated. Um, it looks like our database is up to spec. There might be things we need to add as we go, but I think so far it's looking pretty good. So next I wanna add relations to our actual app, and that's gonna involve these things that look like this. So first I'm gonna start with projects and make, since they're gonna kinda of be the in-betweener, they're gonna to belong to both a team and a user. It belongs to, by the way. So we have team and then belongs to user. And we do want to accept when a new project is created, I do want to accept nested attributes for team. Because when I create a project, I want to be able to assign it to a team. By default, if I was like, knowledgeable enough, I would just have a project inside of a team so it knew already what ID it was. Uh, but this app kind of just looks for it and requires the user to select the team to create the project for. Um, I find that kind of a little more scalable in the sense that you can have multiple teams, but you want to create a project in general and you can add it to any team you want as opposed to just it always being within the team you're in, if that makes sense. So that's the project model. Um, the team model is a little different. We're going to have many projects. And this will be dependent. Dependent destroy. So say a team gets deleted. Um, the project should too. and has many users and make sure those are plural in this case has many needs to have a plural symbol there okay and this one will have an ex, uh, nested form too and this is built in with rails this except accepts nested attributes for and we're going to do users in this case and we can allow destroy to be true great and finally let's do our user model which will be very similar to teams but we won't need to do any kind of craziness we'll just maybe go below device here has many projects 
as many teams. So I don't want a user to be deleted if a team is deleted. The same is true for a project, that would be silly. So a user kind of always exists unless they delete their own account. So we don't have that dependent destroy thing here as you saw. This right here is what I love about Rails in Ruby is that already associates um, all these models already. They're already like, okay, that, that works. I can, I can do this. But it also requires those IDs which we set on our database to you know be intact so through a project i can refer to a user and a team through a team i can refer to a user uh, and a project actually since the team id is over here too and the same is true for users users can go through all those so it's pretty handy and it took me a while to figure out these associations uh, like i said i was i was thinking bigger but it actually turned out to be a more simpler approach than i thought so as your app scales, I'm sure this would change. So just bear in mind that. Okay, so with that said, we should be able to query, you know, for a user at this point or a team if there, there is one. Um, but to do that, we need to actually create some controller uh, adjustments first. So it, stuff gets assigned to the right person in team and that all that stuff. So I think I'll wait to do that in the next episode. So in this episode, we did the modeling and the relationships. So this stuff is literally the foundation of the app. It's completely necessary to have to make it work and to function the way we want. Uh, it's get, it's that very model view controller approach. So I'm starting with models. I'm going to go to the controllers next, and then we'll hit up the views last to hook it all in. The next video, I will focus on our controllers and maybe get started on the views. So I'll see you in that one.